Today we're touring a favela, which is quite interesting. In some sources it says it's not recommended to do favela tours, but I trust, well, even though I haven't seen it before, I trust this tour operator. Apparently it's safe, and I know that not all favelas are as dangerous as they might, like as the stories say. But anyway, I'll have two tour guides and a group, so yeah, I've got to meet up at another hotel. But before that, the free breakfast. I have 25 minutes left to try the free breakfast. And this is the last time I can try it, so let me go and do that. It's not the healthiest breakfast, but uh... There's so many good options here, which is awesome. I'm, I'm annoyed I missed them now, but you know, it's late nights, early mornings, I miss this sort of stuff because of it. I didn't get any toast. Maybe I'll skip toast. I kind of wanted toast. Not getting cereal though. That was nice. That was pretty good. Good range of things. I did not have any, any room for toast. I ate a little too much. Also, I saw someone who had pancakes with chocolate sauce. And I'm just like, where is this? I looked around the entire place. There was no pancakes with chocolate sauce. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I was like, ah, okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the breakfast was, was, was pretty good. It's just that I was already full, like halfway through. I realized, I completely forgot, because I'm on holiday, I'm enjoying myself. I completely forgot that in the morning I struggled to eat, in the mornings in general. I struggled to eat. Uh, I, it, it feels like a chore to get food down me in the morning, especially the first couple of hours. Uh, sometimes end up throwing up and stuff, but there was none of that today, not even close. But yeah, half of it, I was just like, oh. at lunchtime I'd devour this, but right now <laughs> my body's saying no. <laughs> but it's fine, I had the breakfast. That's the last day I could have it. So <laughs> I've had free breakfast this entire holiday, and this is the first day I've actually been able to have it. That's, that's hilarious. And at the next destination, there's no breakfast included, I'm pretty sure, so uh, that should be fun. It's Copacabana looking today. Ah, uh, yes, beautiful. As always, <laughs> that just fell out the tree right in front of me. Is that a sign of something? I don't know. But those gas prices good or bad? It, it, it seems low. I believe I just said gas prices. Fuel prices, I sounded too American there. My pickup is a different hotel, about 20 minutes walk from my hotel. Um, and I think this is it. Copacabana Palace. It looks beautiful. <laughs> I think. They said meet by Gucci. Where's Gucci? On the map it says there's a Gucci here. <laughs> and there's a road that's missing. I'm at the wrong hotel. The right hotel. Uh, Gucci is just there. That's Gucci. So I guess I'll stick around there. I got their WhatsApp number. That, by the way, I mentioned that like with my phone network, they text me when I, when I enter a country. They've not been doing that. So I just went online to find out through O2. And my allowance is for Brazil. If I use 4G or calls or texts, it's six pounds a day, but only the days I use it. I use it one day, it's just six pounds, two days, 12 pounds, etc. I've used one day because when I did the Rio day tour, I needed to, to text my hotel uh, receptionist. I had to tell her that uh, what time I was getting back because I need to get back at six o'clock. And I didn't know if I was going to get back on time. So I had, to kept, I had to keep texting her, just like tell her, all right, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And then I got back in time anyway. So I didn't even need to uh, <laughs> uh, turn my 4G on, but it is what it is. Also, my calls work, which is great, because when I go to Australia and America, over there I get unlimited uh, data. My data works over there, but I, I, I can't call anyone. It doesn't work. But I can call people in Brazil. Brazil in Brazil calls work, which is good. My network's a bit weird sometimes, but it's a pretty good deal. Like really good. Like Oto really good for like travel bundles. So uh, that's brilliant. Anyway, there's this guy here. His name is Ibrahim Suet. He's a journalist died in 1945. Sorry, 1995. That's the year I was born. Just a coincidence, that. And there is Gucci. Some extra flags in there. And that's the road I was missing. That's the road I didn't see. It's a really small road. All right, that makes sense. And now we wait. Just to find a spot in the shade. There's a little bench. This place is beautiful, man. Especially with this weather. Like, it is hot for sure, but like, it's beautiful. Like, <laughs> this is wherever I could live it. Like, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's so bloody beautiful. 
I know it does rain here as well, but still, <laughs> it's not rained since I've been here, so. It just makes you feel good mentally to like, just see that, to wake up in the morning, open the curtains and you see this long beach, all the sun. It's good for your mental health, stuff like this. It really is. The team flag there, Porto Fargo. Flamengo, Fluminese. I don't know who that is. Could be Vasco, I don't know. Only 10 minutes left to pick up. I got here way too early. I've been sitting here like 20 minutes. <laughs> why, why did I leave so early? Look at that. They have six buildings like that inside. Plus Here, like a, basically the best views are in which I'm gonna ask you to take it off that instead it's not about big pockets okay it's about like uh, that you can access some people can think that you can access the cameras by the smartwatch and don't worry with your feet actually the guys of it of course inside of the Fedora have the main road okay so you see all those guys with motor taxi motorcycle right they wait as a motor taxi <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Alison Leroy. I'm born and raised in this place, Favela da Rocinha. I'm 24 years old. And if you want to know my reality, uh, so welcome and let's go to see my real world. Yeah. The work that he does with the kids, sometimes you see him with the, trying to help the kids to discover their own uh, style. You understand? He was in Europe, in so many countries. He was invited in 2016 to walk to the plane with the torch for the Olympic Games. Okay? Representing us, he was taking the place, taking some pictures, you know, even tagging his name sometimes. He rent a place and opened a studio. So, 39 and 37. Pizza place. I asked I asked them if they open because someone is Italian or something. 
said no, like they called the uh, Incredible Hulk. Incredible Hulk. Okay? I'm not your heart. Yes. But from 2008, okay, with uh, Edward Norton. Okay? So uh, I think you can much easily recognize this favela in the, in the Hulk than in the Fast and Furious. Okay? But of course, if you guys want to understand the favela by movies, you should watch Brazilian movies. Not the American ones, right? So there is a movie called City of God. Cidade de Deus, yeah. City of God, really famous in Halloween. Uh -huh. So, uh, crazy movie. You understand? Like, unfortunately, they always talking about violence and crimes. And there is another movie called the Elite Squad, the Brazilian one. There is also an American movie called Elite Squad. Okay? If you try to search for that, Brazilian Elite Squad. The best movie to understand the actual moment of the favelas, okay? They're talking about a, sp a special unit from the police. It's the only one unit that comes for the operation in the alleys. You understand? So uh, it's called Bopi. They have a school in there. No sé por qué, pero boxing es más difícil. No, no, You guys can understand as I told you that they drive motorcycles sometimes they stay in the road here uh, even if we know that they, they play, they play. So if you wanna if you wanna go a bit more inside yeah, yeah you want Responsible for cleaning the guns, a team responsible for training men. Thank you. 
History, maybe he's a uh, Denmark, Switzerland, France. Oh. Yeah. Trump. Because I meet some, not only Israel, but I meet a lot of kind of people. How, how far is it? Say, I'm in Tel Aviv. We take the train and I take a hook in it. I feel like a. Uh, I think five minutes almost. <laughs> I said it might rain and it did. Cliff's sake. I mean the street does look beautiful still. Like it doesn't look ugly now, but obviously it's more of a dull day. But I just ate over there and uh, and head back to my hotel. We'll talk about the food first and then I'll talk about the tour after. Because it's fresh in my memory and fresh in my fresh in my mouth. Uh, the fed Jojo is like a, it's like a beef stew with like bits of pork in it and black beans. It's alright. Um, I feel like the beef was a bit too hard and chewy. I think it's supposed to be that way as well. Uh, but a bit too hard for my liking. Um, it's a bit hard because they're big pieces, so it's a bit hard to chop them up sometimes. Um, and there was like, the, the, the pork was good. The pork was good. Yeah, it was an alright dish. I didn't love it, but it was alright. Um, there's other dishes I got to try as well. The meal I just tried is, you know, it's a pretty good meal. <laughs> and I haven't got that many hours until I have to leave for the airport, so I don't know. I might have to try it somewhere else, but I think it was like churrasco. No, churrasco is a steak. It's a, it's a Brazilian steak. It is a popular dish in Brazil but I'm um, not that interested in trying that there's other small things as well there's like uh, acarajé uh, it's like street food um, what else pau de queijo so, so, pau de like it's, the fur starts with a Q I can't remember that but it's like a small like cheese ball sort of thing uh, it's still food but not a proper meal um, there is something I wanted to try though I keep thinking churrasco but it's not churrasco what is it let me go back to Google, hang on. Moheka, Moheka. It sounds like a drink, but it's not. Moheka is like a fish, a fish stew sort of dish. It looks really nice from pictures. It looks nicer than the uh, Fergiodas, but I bought the Fergiodas because one is cheaper and two is a national dish. 
I visit, I'm visiting Brazil. I want to try the national dish of Brazil, which is Fediodas. But the other, other one looks nicer. It looks like really beautiful from the photos. I'm not seeing it in like person in terms of what the food is. But on the menu, it looks bloody amazing, mate. And I'm just like, and the description was all right. Like it had like, uh, it was like a fish stew and it's a pretty good dish. I don't know if I got enough space to try it, but maybe I, maybe I, might, I might try it a little bit. I'll give it an hour and then I'll go somewhere else and find it. And then the Brigadeiro, right? The Brigadeiro, it's very really nice. It's very really nice. So the fact it came on a stick, right? I thought you eat it, you pick it up, eat it like a barbecue. And then the guy, the, the, the waiter brought a knife and fork. I'm just like, ah. <laughs> and it's literally like, it's, I'm literally holding like this. It's in, the first one's in my mouth already. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> This is meant to be eaten with cutlery? Why is it on a stick then? I'm so confused. <laughs> I was just like, I was, I was, I was baffled. Um, but yeah, it, it was like 100 and, 105 Brazilian rails, which is not much in pounds. Um, I paid 120, I put a tip on top. Didn't have to, but I did. That was for the meal, the dessert, and two bottles of water, 500 milliliter, 510 milliliter. There's other Brazilian foods as well, like street food. There's like small little like bread based things other things like that things that are still food but they're more like snacks or breakfast or whatever and, and there's some popular drinks as well there's a guy talking to me don't know why what year is it why is there a guy in a Mkhitaryan man united shirt what's going on after the review about the sauce i didn't i didn't speak about it i was going to speak about it but literally that food place i i um because there was so much traffic it dropped us off like early at that place and the food place was right there i'm just like oh they got they got <laughs> They got what I want, so I just went straight in. Um, but yeah, the tour is interesting. Um, there's a lot I couldn't film because literally there's people in there with machine guns and stuff, like guarding the place, like making sure everything's okay. They don't want to be on camera. So like, it's, I'm just like, okay, if men with guns don't want to be on camera, that's fine. I'll keep my phone in my pocket. That's fine, mate. He's happy to comply there. Um, but the tour guide, he actually lives there. He actually lives in that favela. It's one of the safer favelas, but it still has some, a lot of dangers of, uh, surrounding it. Um, he talks about a lot of things like potential police operations and uh, how how the guards, how the, how the militia and mafia inside the favela, how they operate. How they operate like an army in a way. They prepare for things. Uh, but walking past them, like with machine guns and stuff, like some of them are like really serious faced and others are, like to joke around, like say hello and start laughing. Um, the tour guide knows some of them. Like, the tour guide knows about people in that favela, so that was very helpful. Um, but yeah, he said like tours into the favela, favela actually helped the favela in a way. Apparently, it can be very good for safety uh, in terms of the safety of the tourists and the safety of the area. And apparently, it's just very beneficial for people to learn about it. And uh, there's a lot of things like he, he knows a lot, so there's a lot of things he talked about. And um, it's, it was really eye-opening, eye-opening to hear like what he was saying. There was one point where some kids went to play football with us, but he's on company time. He's like doing a tour for a company, and he has to like go within a certain time. So like he, he went through a neighborhood, and like there was a bunch of kids that knew him, and they were like, "Can we play football?" Obviously in Portuguese. I don't understand what they were saying, but I got the gist of it. So they translated for us what they were saying, but they were, they really want to play football with him and and us and the tour group, and that would have been fun, but we couldn't do it in the end. But yeah. There's a lot of like, like even inside the favela, there's like some better parts and some worse parts. And right at the bottom, there's like a road with shops, normal shops and pharmacies and dentists, hair, barbers, all that sort of stuff. All the things you would need, they are there on the main street at the bottom of the favela. Um, sometimes police pass through on the street, but they don't go up. So of course, there's some sort of operation, but I don't think there's been anything in a while, I think he said. Um, but we went through some very tight alleyways with steps that are very uneven uh, there were times like there were times when i wasn't allowed to film anyway but there were other times where we went down some corridors and i filmed some of it but there's a lot i didn't film because i couldn't film and walk down the stairs because they, they were so uneven I kept having to hold on to like the wall or some barriers or whatever i'm just like i need a third hand here and a third eye because <laughs> i couldn't concentrate on filming and also making sure i was safe I didn't trip, no one tripped, but could have filmed more. But I filmed what I could, and uh, what I showed you was only like a portion of it. There was a lot of like dark and tight places, places where only I, I only just fit through. <laughs> it was just uh, very interesting to see. A lot of pets, cats and dogs. <laughs> there was one time when I don't know if the camera caught it because I started recording as it happened, 
but we went down this alleyway, right? Very tight, and it was very dark. Most of the alleyways had, had light in it. Not that place, very dark. Next thing I know, right, I pulled, as soon as we pulled the camera out, right, we're walking through, I thought, hey, there's a slow area, less steps. Let me get the camera out, right? My phone, obviously. A cat just runs through by my legs. It just runs through by my legs. It scares the crap out of me. <laughs> I just started laughing straight away. It scared a few of us actually on the tour. But I think someone thought it was like a giant rat or something, because it was like a little black cat. Little for a cat. The cat's obviously a bit bigger than rats. But someone thought it was a giant rat, which is quite funny. Uh, but yeah, that was just like, <laughs> it was just funny looking at that. It was just hilarious. There was a dog as well that followed us for a bit. Then it stopped following us. But yeah, the pets down there uh, seem pretty calm. Like, no, no, no one's barking or anything. But yeah, there's also like a community there. There's people, there's women, there's children, there's families. My tour guide has a family who live in the favela, um, which is interesting to hear about. Um, apparently like they have their own laws there, but like proper laws. So if you steal, come on what the punishment is, I come not what he said, but there's a punishment for if, if you are stealing, the mafia are up there, they'll deal with you. <laughs> Uh, so he said the chances of pickpocketing are very low um, and he says to be honest some of the people up there have better things than you <laughs> anyways <laughs> for whatever reason so um, your chances of getting robbed are pretty low and yeah and he said if you want to film I will tell you when not to film but if you are filming and you are allowed to film make sure it's obvious you're filming like hold your camera up and film he said you've got to make sure people know you're filming so that was a rule. Um, going back to laws, uh, if, if you hurt women or children, they could actually kill you. <laughs> it's like, it's, it, he literally like, my tour guide refers to them as mafia. The, the, that's literally the name for them. You, 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 you touch women or children in that community, they'll probably kill you. So it was interesting hearing uh, things like that, how they govern themselves. And obviously like favelas generally are like, you know, where poor people live. Um, not everyone lives there is poor like some people have like certain advantages, but largely, you know, it's It's that also there's an American school next to it. That's barricaded up which I thought was interesting <laughs> It's right next to the favela. They got a uh, American school in there. Just that's random <laughs> But I guess it's good education, but the fact that it's next to a favela is kind of interesting It is one of the safer favelas though. There are more dangerous ones than that one. That is the biggest one in Rio I'm pretty sure when we went to Ro Roshinia Hoshinia, I think it's pronounced like Hoshinia, but it's R-O-C-H-I-N-H-A. Yeah, there's a few bits of information I forgot as well, but it was very interesting to learn about what a favela is like. And it was very interesting to know that it's there's a safe way to do it. And through tours like that, it was a very safe way to do it. I put the tour operator, uh, the guy's name was Edson. The guy's name was Edson, he was brilliant. And he lives there. Um, but the company he works for, I can't remember, I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> But it's, it was on Get Your Guide and it was quite cheap, it was like £25. Um, but yeah, it was very interesting, it was like a three hour tour, walking through, uphill, downhill, down some uneven steps, up some uneven steps, went onto someone's roof. Um, they charge you five rails each to go up there to get the view, which is really good. Five rails is like one pound something, I think, something like that. But yeah, it was like, it was still pretty scary though, seeing those machine guns and like, you could, they, wouldn't, they don't, they don't do, do anything to you unless you do something, unless you phone them or something. They'll just stand there with their gun. They'll look at you and stuff. But generally, like, they won't, you know, as long as you're just following your tour guide, looking around, they won't do anything to you. <laughs> their main issue is, you know, other things, not tourists. But yeah, aside from, like, you know, violence and stuff, like, the main thing that made me think about, <laughs> made me think in general, was just how people live in there. Like, even in the favela itself, some areas are nicer than others. Like, and like it's not as convenient if you uh, live at the top compared to the bottom. At the top you get a better view, but it's hard to get in and out every day. There are buses that take them to the city if they want to go and work in the city, so there are opportunities there. But yeah, some of the homes I saw, man, there's like, like the tour guide, uh, tour guide described the left side and the right side. The left side had a worse living condition than the right side. Also, there were a bunch of blue bucket, big blue buckets on the roof of each home and they're like, they're, there's water there. It's like emergency water, I guess. I'm pretty sure people who live there pay less taxes. Um, but yeah, regardless, like some parts of the favela are like much worse than others. There are some little areas where there's like really bad smells. 
and I was just like oh damn people actually live in these places and like it's really tight and you're squeezed in there's not enough airflow air circulation so it would have been a nightmare during COVID times it's, it's like you know back in COVID when it said uh, talk I described like when people said stay in your homes government said stay in your homes in parts of the favela it's just like it's not easy, it's not easy to do that because of, the, of all the tight space like it's not feasible and hearing other stories and stuff was uh, pretty interesting um, so yeah uh, great tour tour guide was brilliant and uh, it was very intriguing and I like the fact that you can go in a favela and come out safely <laughs> no trouble at all obviously like he mentioned like violence can happen anytime police can come in at any time do a raid like anything's possible but most days you can actually go in there as long as you're with a tour guide and you know what you're doing and you know when not to film it can be a pretty, a pretty safe experience and we spent like half the time on the main street anyway it went into a couple of alleyways here and there uh, but it was still very eye-opening and to that, that museum as well there was a museum that we went into there was an, there was an artist artist museum um, he carried the Olympic torch like he, he's from the favela and became famous and uh, there are people from the favela from that favela and other favelas as well who became became bigger people like lawyers and doctors and stuff like that so it didn't like end badly for everybody some people get enough money to get out and still stay there because they like it there or whatever there's a few people in there that live in fear because of how the mafia works and it's not like it's not the same people who own who like run every favela there's different favelas run by different people um so there's rivalries there's clashes um it's quite scary <laughs> It's quite scary and also because of the environment you grow up in like some of the kids turn to like turn to either join the mafia or like turn to like drugs and stuff like stuff like stuff that would be encouraged in there stuff that you could turn to if life times are hard stuff like that so there's a lot of people who fall into crime unfortunately and drugs and stuff like that my tour guide fell into football <laughs> he he once skipped school for a few years so he can try and be a footballer it didn't work out for him but there's worse things I guess he didn't turn to drugs at least he didn't join the mafia um, apparently you do have a choice apparently you don't have to join them um, it's not like they don't make you do it they still need people of course but I feel like the living environments there tend to get more people in their side anyway but yeah it's pretty terrifying and scary but that's life for some people and uh, it's, it's really sad but it also makes you appreciate what you have as well a lot more um, but yeah very interesting to finally actually look into one because I've heard lots of things about favelas, about their reputation and what goes on in those favelas. To actually go into one and see what's going on and see some areas, see some alleyways, see people's homes, it gives you perspective. And uh, I thought that was pretty interesting. So yeah, what time is it now? 7.27. Also, I've, to add to review, I like the fact that Edson, the tour guide, was very honest. Like he didn't like sugarcoat things and hide things. He was just like, yeah, this happens, that happens. Yeah this is what's bad, this is what's good. He was like very knowledgeable, obviously because he lives there and he grew up there. Trying to get the get the flags and the thing, but you can't even see the flags from here. Like the flags are right here, but you can't see them properly. That was a fail. There's the US flag, I think the Portuguese flag, Spanish, Israeli, Brazil, and four other flags. Good that he was telling us like what was really going on. And uh, it was very interesting. But yeah, it was like a, a really good tour and uh, it was, interesting so yeah anyway it is i got a couple hours a couple more hours left in brazil uh believe it or not i'm flying uh <laughs> at a very awkward time what's going to be annoying is uh i got a layover that's like five hours so i'm going to be stuck in an airport for five hours because it's going to be two flights to the next destination which is very frustrating but it is what it is that's just how the holiday goes uh <laughs> but yeah uh because there was a day gap because I, I flew in like at midnight and I went to bed so I missed the day and then I did two things in one day the Botafogo game and the Rio game we're now two days behind I think so by the time you're seeing this in my next destination and I might post on Instagram so if you want spoilers on where I'm going next then just go to Instagram and, and you'll see pictures of me in my next country um, it doesn't have to be a secret but I'm very excited to be seeing my next country because uh, there is an interesting thing there that I want to see and some other things I want to do. So yeah, just a couple of days next to destination. Here I was here for what? Three days. Yes, three days. Yeah, almost four. And then 
it was just one day in uh, Peru. Just realizing like it took a day to fly to Peru. It took a whole day to fly here from Peru. It's gonna take a whole day, no, half a day to fly to the next destination, but like, I'm gonna get there in the afternoon, but I'm not gonna do much the rest of that day. Probably buy some food and that's it. And then gonna spend another day flying home. That's, that's four days just gone, just like that. And yeah, that's almost like, I'm only gone for a week and a half. So <laughs> two days, one day, three days. Combine it with four days as well. That's pretty much the holiday. And uh, when I fly back, I land the next day as well. So losing a lot of time, losing a lot of time. And then I'm back to work the day after I land. So it is what it is. I'm gone already by the time you see this. So that is my hotel, Rio Othon Palace. Yeah, I don't feel like my hacker, to be honest. <laughs> If it's at the airport and I'm still hungry, then I'll try it. But the chances of that are pretty low and you'll find out why tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, we've done the longest fl uh, flight journeys, the most annoying flight journeys. Tomorrow is the slowest flight journeys in terms of like, it's not the longest, it's the shortest so far, but it's gonna be, it's gonna feel like the slowest and you'll find out why. And the next vlog will start like a few hours after this one. So this is your boy Davidoff, please like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching, have a good day. I love Brazil. I love to Peru as well. Um, I hope to come back to Brazil at some point uh, because there's things here that are worth seeing, including the F1 race in Sao Paulo, but also the Amazon rainforest. Don't really fancy going in too deep into the Amazon rainforest, but there are places you can do it safely and go on little like cruises or whatever, like Manaus, for example. Um, and also Rio as well, like it's a beautiful city and seeing again, American Idol would be good, uh, good appeal as well, but it's just a beautiful place to come back to. Um, at some point in life um, so yeah I don't think this will be the last time in Brazil and definitely the last time in South America I think I'll be back in this continent at some point but my next destination is not in South America but it's not far away you could probably guess what it is uh, but it's not the US that's the only clue I gave you <laughs> but it's not South America um, but yeah this is your boy Zavidoff please like share subscribe thanks for watching have a good day if I sound tired because I am <laughs> I've enjoyed myself but I've not slept enough so I am exhausted <laughs> um, but yeah, I need to edit this as well. Um, so yeah, goodbye.